Today, we're going to build this rather trendy touch lamp. A DIY project from a tuna can and a pint glass. Let's do it. Let's build this thing. What we want to do is we want to have a touch activated lamp. In order to do this, we need this touch switch module. These things you find in those touch lamps that you need to touch any metal part of the lamp and it then um, subsequently turns the lights on. How we're going to achieve this is we've got our tuna can and this is going to be the base and uh, this is going to go inside and this this touch terminal here, this um, yellow wire, needs to be attached to the metal part here. And um, then if we touch this, the capacitance of your body will trigger the little triac inside. And then it's going to switch this little LED driver. And uh, it's tiny, but it does one watt and it's current limited. Um, it, uh, what it's used for um, is a, normally a completely different use. It's used for one of these GU10 lamps, LED lamps. Um, and the driver inside you can buy on eBay directly order from China and it's a very similar similar to this this particular model here they they look not identical but very similar you could replace this one with this one it would work it's current limited it's um it's a uh, I think it's limited to about two or three hundred milliamps and um, uh, you can have either I think one up to four LEDs and because they're connected in series the current is always limited so that is quite handy which means as long as we um, divide our current nice and evenly we can drive different types of LEDs with them and what you can do is you can use some of this stuff This is like a type of fairy light. Um, it's commonly sold on eBay as um, copper wire lights, rice wire lights, micro LED lights. And when they say micro, I mean, they are tiny. I mean, just if I, if I show you here, they are minute. Um, these are all collected, connected in parallel along the length of these, um, these wires. They call them copper wire because sometimes they come in this copper copper effect wire. You can get them in cold white, warm white. I prefer the warm white color. LEDs have polarity, so there's no polarity indicated on this. It's just just these wires. Now it looks like they're bare wires. They're not. They're actually insulated. They're they're coated with a layer of um, varnish which means they can touch each other without shorting out. This is, of course, not mains rated. It's only rated for about 2 or 3 volts, um, or maybe about 12 volts. But uh, what you can do is you can solder through this insulation. If you have a really hot soldering iron, um, it vaporizes the varnish, and you can then um, apply a bit of solder on directly onto the wire. And you can determine the polarity by using one of these lithium coin cells, like a... Um, a CR2032 cell. It's got quite high internal resistance so it won't damage the LEDs and it's only about 3 volts. Um, and you, you put it on one way and if it doesn't light you reverse the polarity and as you can see the LEDs light. But what we want to do is we want to, because this is made to drive 4 a 1 watt LEDs um, in in series we're going to take multiple of these strings, which are all parallel wired LEDs, and wire each string in series with the next. So we'll have four strings. And um, um, I, you normally buy these with a little battery pack on it. Sometimes it comes with a USB, so you can charge it off a USB phone charger. Um, I 
I bought mine, I think, in a, it was a 100 LEDs. Yeah, 100 LEDs. And I'll just divide it by four, the string. Determine the polarity of each string. And um, those four strings would then be rewired in series to make a, a long string of sets of parallel uh, series wide. I'll do a diagram so that you can see what I mean. What we have is we have these LED strings here. So this is one string and we have four sets of them. And um, as you buy the LED strings, they're, they're LED, a bunch of LEDs in parallel. I bought a 100 LED string, which I've chopped into four pieces. And this symbolizes one string, where this is a, there's positive and negative on the string. But what I'm doing is I've got a positive on one side, and because it's all paralleled up here, the negative is paralleled at the bottom here. So there's a negative here. And then it's connected to the positive of the next string. And, and then the negative of this string is connected to the positive of this string, and so on and so on, until you've got four of them. And um, I'll zoom in a bit so you can see. There's the junction between the two strings. There's the negative of this string connected to the positive of that string. And um, that is then connected to... Um, you get the, the main incoming positive and uh, the negative on that side which then marries up to this um, LED driver from a GU10 lamp, which you can buy on, on eBay. And then that is then switched via this touch um, switch module here. You got your live coming in to the red wire, and then um, your neutral goes to this, which is supposed to be a black wire, but for some reason this particular model, they've put a, a brown wire on it should be black wire because all the other ones I've bought have had black wires on them. The yellow wire is your touch sense wire which goes to um, the metal base of, of the lamp or any metal part of the lamp that you can touch. It would then capacitively sense you touching it. A little triac inside would fire and switch the live through to the white wire so that's your switch live out and the neutral is common for uh, both the LED driver and this module. Um, this is a current limited power supply, so it will adjust. It will try to only maximally output uh, about two or 300 milliamps, but I want to divide all this current nicely uh, amongst these LEDs. Um, serial parallel pairs um, is probably a, a good idea. The hardest bit is obviously on the string, you can't see the polarity from these two ends here. So what you use one of these lithium coin cells, just touch them both sides and, and see if it lights. If it doesn't light, then you know you need to rotate it and you just mark which, which one is plus and which one's minus. I think it is probably possible because this driver is I think one to three watts depending on how it's wired in the GU10 lamp. If it's three watts, it's three one watt LEDs connected in series. If it's one watt, it's just one LED. So in theory, you could put the whole string just connected to the two outputs. Um, I think that would stress the little module a bit, so I, I prefer to put them in series like, like this. But it's worth experimenting. But uh, yeah, these coin cells are a handy little trick to test LEDs because it doesn't damage them. Um, I've already wired pre-wired these um, one of these uh, strings in um, a set of four strings that are connected in series. I've already determined the polarity here. So so what you have in, in the end is you'll have the one string, you'll have what well, I've cut off the, the the negative here and only left the positive on this one. And on this side, I've done the opposite. I left the negative. I put a black Sharpie on there just to remind me that this one is, um, is negative and I've cut the positive off. What I'll do is I'll give you an ex example of how this would work. I'll just tack them on just to test so you can see what I mean. So we'll just gently tack that on there. Right, that's good enough to test. If I take uh, the quick test, which I made a video about before, uh, the quick test allows me to take bare wires like this and we'll shove our right live and neutral straight into this quick test here.
it's safe to work on because uh, it disconnects here. Now when we close it, we'll have a current limited supply of maximum, I think it's about 12, 13 volts, but it will be limited by how many LEDs you connect. So now if we close it, as you can see, we have all these lovely LEDs lighting up. Now they are now running, running on, on about 12 volts because our little, I have to be careful here, but our little power supply here drops the voltage down for the little transformer, LED driver, and you've got the positive and negative going in for all the strings that are connected in parallel and series combinations. And this will be our lights. Now what we're going to do is then take that little power supply, we'll marry it up with this one. There's a little diagram on there that explains And uh, this, I believe, is neutral. This goes to the to the metal body, which is, which will be your capacitive touch sensing of your lamp. Uh, this is the switched output line, so we need to tie that. The, that's the live switch live out. This joins onto the neutral, and this is your live in. Um, we then have also a neutral to join here going to make all of that fit into our tuna can of course this is metal and um, we don't want any short circuits we don't want any live wires coming in contact with the metal so we have this uh, insulating disc that goes inside we also have this little dual purpose cover um, it's it's the lid of a coffee <laughs> coffee jar anyway so that's going to be a vanity cover and also keep all the the naughty stuff safely insulated and away from everything so this is going to go at the bottom it's going to go at the top these are going to come out and of course our beautiful glass is going to go on the top and we're going to have a lamp that when you touch here it's going to light and if you touch again it's going to turn off just uh, nice little holes, and these are just 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 big enough for these uh, wires to poke through the positive and the negative. And after that, we need to drill a hole in the side of the tuna can, like so. Um, and that is to let the live cable needs to make its way inside the tuna can. Now, of course, if we drill through metal like this. It's going to be very sharp and there's a risk that from jiggling about over time it might cut through and then you have metal cutting into potential live wires not good so what we need to do is to put a a little um a little grommet in there um, and once it's done it'll look something like this and your cable should be able to pass through there quite nicely and makes it look nice and neat as well stops it from cutting and misbehaving we of course need to grip this cable on the inside somehow so that it can't pull out so you might notice that I have uh, a little resistor soldered onto the bottom of uh, of this uh, tuna, tuna can um, I've simply taken the bottom of the can scratched it a bit to get I think there's like a, a some sort of coating on here um, it probably to protect the the, the the contents of the can coming in contact with the food uh, with the can um, I've scratched it through to the bare metal and soldered it put a dot of solder on there and then soldered this 50k resistor um, onto the bottom this is not necessary but I am trying to be a bit safer these modules they work fine I've used them before but the fact that I don't 100% this is supposed to be uh, insulated only capacitively coupled so when you touch when you touch this um, it's supposed to be safe to touch and, and it triggers the, the, the circuitry inside to turn the thyristor on but I want peace of mind so I want um, in case something blows up in here that nothing makes its way back for you which it shouldn't because it's designed to be safe but um, just as a bit of extra peace of mind 
I have decided to add this resistor which would if you had any live juice coming through this yellow wire here it would limit the current that this would this would liven up to to adding my own little extra safety to it what I'll do is I'll also add an inline fuse um, now in the UK you have uh, fuses in your plug so you it, it's strictly not necessary we are in the UK at the moment um, but if you were to do this anywhere else I would recommend putting an inline fuse you can get um, an enclosed little fuse holder like this um, or something with screw terminals would work as well but um, because we we've got a little space inside here I'm using this little solderable fuse and it's just a bit of extra safety in case in case this goes um, it's just gonna blow the fuse I think it's a I think I chose a 3 amp fuse but yes, yeah, so in the UK you can just put a 3 amp fuse in the plug. I think what we need to do to start this whole procedure is we need to poke the LEDs through here so they need to be unsoldered. So I think what we're going to do is Okay, we poke them through the hole. Poke them through the hole too. Oh, I wonder if I should use the magic of blue tack to hold them in place so it doesn't go walkies. And blue tack is my old friend. Blue tack, print sticky stuff. Uh, white tack, I call it blue tack even though it's white because. That's one of the common ones. Press stick, it's called in some countries. And uh, I'll use this to hold it in place temporarily so it won't pop out on me. And the same with this one. Then it allows me to solder without worrying too much about movement. So I'm going to run a, a little bit of solder over the top. Put a little blob of solder on the end of the wire. That makes it easy for me to just touch the soldering iron to make it stick. The long one, I believe, is positive. short one is negative there we go you can give that a test to see if it still works yep that's good Taken um, a little uh, solderable fuse, and I've sleeved it with some some of this uh, fiberglass uh, heatproof sleeving. It's not; it's quite tough stuff. It's not; it's completely overkill. A bit of heat shrink sleeving would would do the trick. Um, put this little uh, lug on here so that it fits nicely into the terminal into the terminal block, and uh, that's just it's just for for extra peace of mind we'll screw that down there we go and I think what we should do is we should then attach it to the to the live so this is the incoming live for the touch switch. So that's what we'll do now. I use my helping hand, which is a piece of uh, blue tack or white tack. And uh, we'll now clip this 
a bit shorter, which I've also pre-tinned. Put a little drop of solder on there. Yeah, so the blue tag is handy because now I don't need to hold this. It's being held in place by the blue tag or the white tag. It looks like a good joint. Right. Incoming live feed. Incoming live feed. Goes to the touch switch. The output needs to go, which is the white wire, needs to go the live output switch live needs to go to this little LED driver here. Now I'm thinking to join this wire here is silly. Why can't I just go straight, straight there? So I'll, I'll, un I'll remove this wire here and go, sorry, go straight to the live. It's actually indicated L for live there. And we'll remove that wire. Put a bit of fresh solder on there. And we'll clip this shorter. So the output of the touch piece goes straight to the LED driver. It's just touching with the solder iron because both the wire is covered in solder and that so the PCB as well and touch that joint. Yep. Right, now the neutral, where it's indicated N there. Maybe you can see that. I might zoom in. That's the neutral. That needs to join up with this odd color for a neutral. There we go. Now that's ready to go into the connector block for our neutral connection. So we put that one in there. So this terminal block will make it convenient for us to connect our flex. Our flex, our flex will go in there, but we can't do that now because it needs to pass through the hole in there. Right, so now we still need to connect this little resistor here. It needs to go. Let me just zoom out for a second. This resistor here needs to connect to the touch wire for my safety resistor. So when we touch the base, it activates the touch switch. So we have this little insulation disc here, and we'll, I've got a hole in there, and it'll. I'm going to pass it through there. So now we've got a nice little insulation surface there, and this here, I'll sleeve it. So now let's get another piece to sleeve over this wire. Right. 
give that another shrink. Misbehaving. I only need two terminals because this will be a double insulated device. So there'll be no need for enough, so we only need lime and neutral. Like a lot of lamps are. Now I kind of think that we need another bit of uh, heat shrink sleeving here. So let me add that as well. fresh bit of solder to that so it's easy to join it there you go there you go because it's gold let's give these wires some juice in the form of 230 volts or 40 volts or 220 volts it's all the same thing really I believe that this driver will even work in America because it's rated from 120 volts to 240 volts right let's see if uh, it releases some magic smoke there you go there was one little flash I think that's uh, that's normal now if I touch the metal of this uh, this tuna can should turn on. Hey, hey, it's on. Off. On. There we go. All safe again. So what I think what we're going to do is we're going to get some double-sided tape and stick this little driver, stick it to the bottom of this insulate, uh, insulated um, plastic lid here. We'll stick this at the bottom of our little LED transformer power supply. And uh, if I can peel that back, there you go. And we do the same with, the, with this. Stick some on the back of this. say this one should go here that one should go somewhere there something like that or perhaps this could go yeah I think should just about work. A bit of in there to get the insulate in place. We'll put a piece on top of the driver and a piece on top of the the touch switch. So what I'll do is I'll wrap a cable tie quite tightly onto it so it digs into the cable. I've heated it up with heat gun to make it nice and soft so the cable tie should dig in quite well. Now it's actually digging into the plastic quite a lot because I've, I've heated it up with the heat gun so that it, the insulation was quite soft so the cable tie could nicely dig in there and that should then stop it from pulling its, its way through there. Look 
looking good. Neutral goes in there. way to find out let's give it a try Well, finally got it working. Touch for on, touch for off. Um, I had a problem with that little sense resistant. Um, I think the value was too large. Strictly speaking, wasn't necessary. I added it as a safety feature. It worked before the lamp was put together. But for some reason, some capacitive effects, maybe interference from the power supply, um, this resistor would 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 interfere, and the signal isn't strong enough from the from your finger. And uh, the other thing I did was uh, this little um, this little silicon grommet just wasn't up to the task. I think the can was too sharp; it cut straight through it. I replaced it with. Uh, With this much more sturdy, much more sturdy grommet cable gland, cable relief strand thing. So the silicon bead has been put in. I put some on the glass as well, very carefully. It's quite yucky stuff to work with. It smears all over the place. Um, but it's a bit slippery, slidey, and I want to get the gap around the bottom of the, the base quite even. So I've put these bits of um, white tack just temporarily in spaces, spacers to hold it while, while the silicon sets. Of course, the only thing left to do is to fit a plug at the end of the lead. In the UK, you have a standard 13 amp plug, but it has an internal fuse, which is a good thing. I think in our case, what we will do is we'll fit the smallest standard fuse that goes in there, which is a, I believe, a 3 amp fuse. Double them up so they have a nice snug fit for the screws to crash down onto. I will tighten them up properly once they're in place. Cord clamp, strain relief. Something people don't do much these days anymore is fit a plug themselves to a bit of flex. I think it's just, I was taught that at school. I'm, I'm, I wonder if kids are taught that nowadays at school. This is a pretty much uh, a nanny environment now where anything electrical is viewed as being dangerous to the public. Well, we used to do it as kids at school. I think every everybody should know how to fit a plug. It's a basic skill. 
Right. Let's plug that in. There we go.